Today you'll see a dress and a top, both for neat fabrics, both with special v-neck lines. One is an overlap v-neck band that's easier to sew than the traditional one. The other one is a unique scarf collar that is just gorgeous. This is a dress in black and white with an overlap v. And this is a beautiful, beautiful scarf collar that I've done in a contrast purple. Super unique techniques to see today. Keep watching. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from LiftingPinsAndNeedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing limitless sewing and lately capsule wardrobes i had a little intermission this week with a pattern and a color scheme that is not part of the collection but we are back and this is the eighth pattern and the final pattern in the book that i've been sewing the so beautiful book by kenneth swang she is the owner of itch to stitch and she has a brand new book that is on pre-order right now and is going to start shipping the 8th of december so I've been sewing up every single pattern. I really love the process. I had actually tested some of these patterns last year. Please catch up on the series. I have all the videos in a playlist link down below, as well as all the information about the book. And I'm very excited to share the two garments I've made. It's been a really interesting week with tropical storms. Uh, we've had the power out for hours on end every single day, which means that this video is coming to you today and not on Wednesday when I had planned. But on the upside, the grass suddenly exploded and is mega green. All the mangoes behind me are like falling every single second. That's why I'm not under the tree right now. Some of you had pointed out you'd seen mangoes falling. Obviously, I don't want one to fall on my head. Okay, back to the topic. I usually don't wander off topic, but I just thought I'd mention. Okay, the Orosi top and dress is for neat fabrics. It can be either for long sleeves or short sleeves. You have a fitted bodice, but the bodice isn't a regular bodice. It has a design that is slightly shorter in the center front and then curves down to the side. That center section is not empire line. It's just a tad above the waist and then it just curves down to the waist and then at the back it, it goes at the waist obviously <laughs> so I really really like that design feature I think the gathers that are sewn onto the skirt or peplum just look differently and hang differently if they come a little higher than the waist I think they just skim over the tummy and I'm promising you they don't enhance anything or create too much volume. I have to be honest, I'm always worried about gathers and have my reservations with them. So I don't just make something with gathers, but whenever I've made something with gathers that Kenneth designs, I know Kenneth always puts a lot of thought into where the gathers are placed, how much gathering is there and the shape and how that is going to look on our body. So trying to squash the inner voice telling me, no, Karina, don't sew gathers. I just wanted to sew them and just see. The cool thing about this design is the types of necklines that it has. You have two options. Both of them are V-type necklines. The neckband is sewn in a way that is different to the traditional way. And I have two videos already on the channel showing you how to sew those neckbands. This one is an overlapped one. It's way easier. It skips a lot of steps at the beginning. It's simpler to sew than the traditional one so that's good the other one that you see on the liner is the scarf collar and this one just blew me away when i saw it literally blew me away i've never sewn a neckline like this or seen one this is actually a scarf because part of the neckline comes here has a longer piece that goes tucked in under the other side it's very interesting to sew and i am just so happy this is in the book i think the fact that this neckline is here incorporated into this simple design is gold i think it's one of the most unique things in this pattern and well worth the value of the cost of the book along with all the other patterns you know the, the value in this book is incredible so I think this neckline is worth your time in sewing. I think you'll be amazed just as much as I have been. Although the recommendation states light to medium weight knit fabrics, I think I would stay with the lightweight fabrics. You need the fabric to stretch about 65 to 85%, but I think you can get away with it stretching about 40 to 50. I think you'll be okay. I would stay with the lightweight fabrics because of the bulk that you could get with the gathers otherwise. And the scarf collar piece has a section where you'll be sewing a few layers. So I would stay with rayon spandex, ITY, double brush poly, modal, bamboo, that sort of thing. And I would probably stay away from cotton spandex, even if it is a light cotton spandex, because of the way that cotton does not drape, it'll stick out. That's just my opinion. I've chosen ITY for one and a rayon spandex for the other, with the scarf collar being in some type of polyester knit, I am not sure but they are all very lightweight. 
It is a semi-fitted design, so at the bust you won't have any positive ease, it, the zero is there, meaning that the garment will measure what you measure at the bust. That is fine for knit fabrics because you're working with stretchy knit, so it'll fit good, it'll look good. Then at the waist you have a bit more space, about two inches of positive ease, and then sewn on is the skirt or the peplum with gathers that will give you a lot of ease at the hips, about 14 inches. And maybe if you regularly need to blend between one size for the waist and then another for the hips, you might not need to. If it's just one size different, I would just make one size. The length of the top is at the full hip and I decided mine was a little long when I tried it on, so I chopped it off by two inches. <laughs> At least for me, hit the full hip. I think if you are shorter than me, it could end up being more like a tunic, maybe. Length is always a personal preference, so I always adjust when I want a different look. The dress, for me, hits above the knee with no modifications at all. So if you are shorter than me, you might end up with a dress sort of mid-knee or under the knee, maybe. So just check. I did measure my pattern and figured out it was going to be perfect just above the knee so I made no change there and the only change I made was to add one and a half inches to the length of the long sleeves because I've made both of my garments with long sleeves. I did that because I had enough fabric and this collection is sort of more cooler weather focused. It's not that summery so I decided to just go with that option. In this video you have two practical segments. I have sewn both techniques and filmed them for you. The first you're going to see is the overlap V neckband that is so easy to sew and you'll be seeing my bold print in black and white there. So let's hop in to see how to sew this and then I'll be back to show you my dress. Don't you think this is starting to wear me? You've been raining down like hail on a week. As usual, the back shoulder seams have been stabilized with a little strip of interfacing and extra you need to do that also on the V. Just like two inches there and two inches there. This will help this area be more durable. This is also stay stitched there and then snipped into. This is the band piece for the V neckline. Just fold it in half lengthwise. Keep the raw edge on the top, the folded edge on the bottom. When you're doing this, it'll just make it easier. So just do that. The fabric wants to flip and curl because it's ITY. You've got your raw edges up here, your folded edge there, and then bring one end and then the other end that way. Make sure these edges are the folded ones and the raw ones are on the bottom. So just overlap one over the other. It doesn't matter which side you overlap. And this is how you form that V. This is easier, I find, than the traditional one where you have to sew like a little thing and snip and fold and you know, this is just several steps less and it still looks really nice. That's how it looks like on one side and that's how it looks like on the other. Now it's helpful to do some basting stitches just there and there to keep this together and then this can be applied onto the v-neckline like any other v-neckline, just the same thing. I'm doing this with a long stitch length and now let's just baste all the way across the middle just so this doesn't move around like that anymore. This can be removed once the v-neckband is on. Again, remember your raw edges are on the sides here and your folded edges are on the inside. So if you've got them the other way, it's still time. You can still undo this and, and flip it the other way. I have the front neckline extended here and I've divided it into four already so that that's ready to go. From this point to the center back there is a pin. That's one half. And then bringing these together will give you these other two halves that are always on the front neckline. Here is the V piece. Now I always like sewing from this side because I can really control how this is going to extend so I don't get a pucker. So this would go underneath. That's the way I do it, like that. We're using a 3 8 seam allowance. So 3 8 that way, 3 8 that way. In this case you don't have that seam like you do when you sew those other types of v-neck bands. But where those two seam allowances intersect that way and that way is where this point is. And that's the one that needs to match this one right there. And then this one will go that way and that one will go that way. I like getting this little V section out of the way first, just sewing this little area and then sewing on the rest of the neckband. So this is how I'm going to sew with this on top, the band on the bottom. So there, right up to that little point there, pivot and then sew there. I like to sew this little section with a straight stitch 
Then the rest of the band, I saw it with a shallow zigzag stitch, but nothing can beat the precision of a straight stitch in this section. basting stitch that we've done previously and this is how the v-neckline is going to look on this section there's the v there's the overlap right there i had already divided my neckline into quarters and now i'll divide my neckband into quarters so this will be the middle here the v is a reference the center back is there and then we put these two together and then you get your other quarter over here look how fiddly this is it's so fiddly I mean the, the fabric is just but I never regret the fabric because it's so nice to wear so that's one quarter and this is going to be the other quarter I'm just putting the pin randomly here because I'm going to knead this up and curl it <laughs> okay so I uncurled my neckband I've pinned the quarters so the quarter of the band to the quarter of the neckline there and the center backs the neckband is slightly shorter than the neckline and now this is where you would now stretch the neckband to fit the neckline and sew all the way around. I want to do this with a serger, I think I'll have better access and control. I'll start from the tip and go stretching my neckband to match my neckline until I make it to the other side and then I'll go to the sewing machine and finish sewing right there. This is one of the quarters there, I'll just remove the pins as I get there. And then I have the second quarter right there. nice to leave a long tail of serger thread and use a big needle to put this through and then you can tuck that back in there so it's nice and neat and you don't have any little bits of serger thread flying around that gives it a really clean finish there on the on the V so now I'm just gonna go and sew with my sewing machine I didn't trim away anything when I was sewing and I can pick up where I stopped right there and sew all the rest now with a shallow zigzag because that was done with a straight stitch so remember from the point there i'd already sewn an inch that's where i'm going to start now okay so that beautiful v-neckline is done that's how it looks you have a little overlap like that I think it's a really neat way to do it very similar to the other way but it just avoids you that step of doing that stitch right there so whichever way you overlap it it's going to look different doesn't really matter and it's a cool v here is my dress you can see that the back has the right side of the fabric showing and that's because i did two layers for the back piece that's something i commonly do just to give more structure to the dress because i'm working with a light knit fabric because I did that, I'm also able to enclose this shoulder seam. So it, that always feels so neat on, it feels so nice on the skin and just looks amazing when you can do that because there are two layers there. So that's good. <laughs> if you're on Patreon, you get a little video I made with that technique there for you. Sewing these garments is simple. You stabilize your shoulder seam, you do your neckband, whichever one you're doing, and then you carry on sewing your sleeve in flat attaching on your skirt pieces and then sewing the side seam i really enjoyed it it's super easy you can see this huge leaf here i did all sorts of things with my uh, placement i'm glad this is only on one side of me and not on both because then it would have been a little bit ridiculous i'm not upset i'm going to wear it and enjoy it <laughs> 
and I really like the depth of this v-neckline. It's not low, it's just right. You would have seen the details in the video footage because it's, it's hard to see the print. But there is the overlap there that was really easy to sew. I've hemmed with my twin needle and I've got all the gathers there. I love the dress, it was so fun to sew and you'll see it on by itself with purple boots <laughs> and also with my purple sleeveless cow's band cardigan, so let's see it. Here is my long sleeve dress with the overlap V neckline that was super fun to sew, super easy and I have huge leaf prints over this type of ITY, it's got dots and you know there's one there sort of on the upper chest area, there was no way to avoid it so I'm going with it. <laughs> at least it's not on both sides and it's just over here you know that's what you get with big prints i was just really determined to have a dress in this fabric i think the ity is perfect for these light gathers that you have around here the gathers aren't extreme they're very light because the seam is sort of above the waist in the center and then goes down to the side i think it's really nice and it just makes these gathers sort of skim over the tummy here and I don't think it accentuates anything at all. So I really like that. This is the original length of the dress. It hits me above the knee, so if you're shorter, it'll probably be longer on you. So just check the length if you want yours above the knee. That's how it looks in the back. I've got my back piece double as you saw. It just feels very nice like that with ITY. It just feels more supportive there. And purple boots. Love this. Here's my black and white dress with my purple boots and my purple sleeveless cow's band cardigan. Cardigan covers the leaf situation that I've got going on on the dress. I really like this outfit, the purple boots, the long sleeve dress. This would be a perfect winter outfit for me, for my weather. I wouldn't need anything more than this. As with all these looks while I was sewing the book, I could imagine them when I put the fabrics together and it's just amazing to actually have them done and on. You can see my leaf up closer. <laughs> okay, I'm just glad there isn't another one on the other side. So let's go with that leaf right there. Nothing I can do about it. Here, maybe you can see that overlap v-neckline. I think this is easier to sew than the ones that have a seam there. I found it much easier so you just need to try have a go I think the depth of this V is super pretty second garment I decided to make a top the main body the sleeves everything is a black rayon spandex but I really wanted that pop of purple there I didn't want to just make a black top because I thought that was a bit boring and I found a scrap literally like shreds of fabric in a bag I have and it's a purple polyester type athletic knit fabric I'm not sure what it is it is lightweight and when I looked at the scraps I had left from my purple Ponte Roma I used for my cardigan they were exactly the same purple like I couldn't tell which one was which unless I touched them and noted that the ponty was heavier and that this one was lighter and I had just enough to cut out the scarf piece with one sneaky seam in there <laughs> you can't see the seam and I'm super glad I found that little scrap to make this top different and go within this collection that focuses on purple. So let's see how to sew this awesome scarf collar. It's so fun to sew, not hard. If you watch the videos and follow the instructions, you'll be able to do it no problem at all. So let's see how to do that. the scarf collar piece that's how the paper looks and you're meant to put that long edge there on the fold so I've got this edge on the fold along the bottom here there are lots of marks to make that will match shoulders dots triangles all that stuff and it's a dark purple fabric I've just used a coloring pencil dipped in water and that's how I mark over here on this section I had run out of fabric in the length so I have a sneaky seam there to complete that length to start putting this together, you need to have it like I have it here. You're meant to have the wrong side of the fabric up, so you can see all the marks. Right sides of the fabric touching each other. There's a little triangle right there. And this is where we need to sew. 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance from the edge. 
up to the edge of that triangle there and reinforce there. After sewing that there, we need to snip from this bottom edge up to there. Here's the edge of the triangle and I'll just sew a 3 8 seam allowance. Right here, you need to snip into there. Here on this side of the scarf, we are looking at the slanted area. You have several notches down here on the bottom and dots. There's a dot there and then there's the first notch. So what needs to be sewn now is here, pivot past that dot and up to that first notch right there, 3 8 seam allowance. After sewing that section, we also need to snip into there and make these seam allowances smaller. They're 3 8 you know, you can trim it down to about half. Okay, after sewing that little bit there, that slanted bit and this tiny section over here, we can flip this right sides out. This little point here, I'm just going to use this tweezer. So basically you have this section that has that edge finished, so finished there and then you have two raw sections that are together up to this little bit right here that's also like that. This short end that's raw, that's close to where that snip is, we need to sew through the both layers a gathering stitch, so I've changed my stitch length to 5. So that's a gathering stitch and then another one parallel to that one. the front neckline wrong sides up but you've got the chalk marks to note that this is the wrong side plus you see the fusible interfacing there and the notches there are notches that you need to mark that are on the pattern there and this little triangle goes marked only on the right side on the wearer's side so if I place this on my chest it's on my right side this is my right hand <laughs> that's that triangle there from notch to notch, you have to stay stitch and snip into there just like you would a regular V, only it's got a few more steps. Now we need to flip this and look at the fabric from the right sides up. Remember, this was the right side where the little triangle mark is. I'm just going to scribble an R here so you can see. So I've got chalk signifying right wearer side, left wearer side. When you put this on your chest, this will be on your left chest, this will be on the right chest. So on this left section is where you need to get your scarf piece. You take this piece, leaving this dangly bit down, like that, and match this edge to where this was snipped, right there. You can see the edge of this one is right where that snip is, so when you sew from there, it will catch the edge and that point there. And the other end of this, you need to pin it matching the notch on the neckline that you can see on the other side and now you'll see that you have this excess here all that so this is where you have your gathering stitches and you pull your threads to make this gather into that space right there so take the bobbin thread once so just fiddle and adjust until it matches the length now that i've got that pin there we're going to flip it so we are looking at the wrong side of the fabric and I'm going to have to repin. This is going to have, this section is going to be sewn with the gathers facing down and it's just because you need to see your stay stitching and where you snipped into and you can't accurately do that from this other side. Okay, here you can see we'll start stitching from there and finish right at that point right there and that's going to be on the edge of the scarf piece underneath. can see the snip and there you can see the edge of the scarf piece we have to sew right up to that point there okay there you can see I've sewn up to there and we have that right on the edge I didn't back tack there I'm going to secure that by hand we're looking at this from the right side of the fabric up. You can see my chalk marks. 
this was just sewn on there now we have this little bit here that has been enclosed remember this little section is a closed area and then we had that area where we snipped remember in here there was a little triangle where this little seam was sewn up to from that triangle there was another notch right there and these need to match now on the neckline on the right wearer side so if you rearrange the neckline you'll see the triangle at the back and you'll see that notch there so those need to match now remember this was sewn up to the edge of the triangle so if i put a pin through there i'm right at the edge of the triangle underneath so that matches there now i have to keep going along the whole neckline matching the notches here is the notch for the shoulder seam on the scarf the marks are inside because you have the right side of the fabric out there and the marks were done on the wrong so but you can still see them match that to the shoulder seam there this section is a little bit shorter than the neckline underneath so just stretch this scarf section to match the neckline it's not much at all but it is a little bit shorter that's the pin that marks the center back of the neckline matching the center back of this scarf collar here is the other shoulder seam here is the mark for the shoulder seam and then this section that also was snipped into earlier there this needs to match that notch on the neckline or just the edge here where this other collar piece is right there this section is also a little bit shorter as you can see than the neckline so just stretch this to fit okay now that all these scarf pieces pinned we can sew from there all around to this other side from this section to that section you have this little bit dangling this is what's going to go through a little loop that's left here afterwards but let's just sew this now <music> This is the right side of the fabric up this is how this looks when it's sewn and then the scarf piece comes from the left this area needs to be tucked in at the back of the gathered area and here you have an opening remember that little opening that's where the scarf gets pushed through we can serge all these raw edges here there it's like a v neckline it's just a little bit different and tidy it up just surge around the raw edges and then that's done here is my rosy top with the purple scarf neckline i think the purple looks so striking it's such a beautiful tone of purple so rich it is a light fabric so i think it matches the rayon spandex i wouldn't want to have done this with the leftover ponty i had i didn't have enough anyway <laughs> but i think that would have just been too heavy and too bulky I have a seam right there but you, I can barely see it, you can't see it and my hair is going to cover it and I'm just happy to have a garment that looks like this with the purple there. Purple is really hard to find. I'm always looking for it and I just never find purple fabric so I'm glad this scrap was saved because I knew it had some value for something. It was going to work at some point. <laughs> the rest is all the same. I did chop off two inches here when I tried it on because I wanted it a little bit shorter. If you notice, this is unhemmed. I really didn't want to hem this because it was going to create bulk. Rayon spandex, if you cut it really, really carefully and nice and neat, it can hang beautifully and it's not going to curl up or unravel or anything like that. I've seen ready-to-wear garments sewn in that way and I always think, oh, how messy is that? But there is a time and a place to leave rayon spandex unhemmed especially when it's something flowy with gathers you know if i would have hemmed it it wouldn't have looked very nice at all at least with my twin needle in my domestic sewing machine so that's that i've also left the sleeves unhemmed just to keep it consistent and to not make it look weird so this is a rare exception that you'll see something unhemmed from me and the collar is right there and I'm so happy with this you can't imagine so let's see this one on with my denim castle point skirt and both of my Carlsbad cardigans I paid my top with my castle point skirt in the grey denim and my purple boots and I love this little purple feature here for the top the gathers I don't find the too excessive I did trim off two inches from this when I tried it on I thought it was just too long for what I prefer so very easy to wear, super comfortable 
and I absolutely love this but you need to see it up close. Cow's band cardigan with black and white goes perfect with this outfit. This one goes perfect as well because I have solids underneath and this just pokes out through there. Grey, purple. I love this outfit, it's amazing. Yeah, I just feel awesome in this one. My purple sleeveless cow's band can also make it into the mix. You know, sleeveless with a long sleeve looks awesome. <laughs> and this purple from the scarf is the same color as the cardigan, although they are different fabrics. They are exactly the same tone of purple. So I really love this outfit too. <laughs> so there is a little curve in the seam here of the bodice. It's a little higher and then it curves down there. I didn't make any adjustments. And at the back you have a seam right there as well. It's right at my waist. And then we have this little gathered peplum. I didn't find the gathers to be excessive. It's definitely not double the amount of the gathers. I would say much less. I'm usually super careful with gathers because I always think they're gonna add bulk. I don't think they do. And I think that because it's raised here a little, it helps because it just skims over the tummy right there. It's not right at the tummy. You know what I mean? I haven't hemmed it. I was really careful to cut it properly so I don't ruin the drape of this rayon. I really want you to see the detail of this neckline. It's so pretty. Looks harder to sew than it really is. It's just not that hard. Follow the steps, follow the notches, and I hope the video helped. But it's so unique, so striking, perfect for cold weather. It's a really, really nice neckline to try. And I love this little pop of purple with this black top. It's super simple, just ray on spandex. some thoughts about capsule collections and this approach to sewing that I will be touching on in a separate video where I'll give you an overlook of all the garments together and show you all the looks that I can achieve with this collection. 14 pieces, they ended up being 14 pieces. I think originally I wanted to make 15. I couldn't make one because of a fabric choice issue, but I'm very happy with these 14 pieces. I can't wait to start wearing them out and about and just look out for that video very soon. Otherwise, I've got so many projects going on, big ones, things I'm sure you are going to enjoy. So just know that whenever I'm not uploading a video, I am behind the scenes creating a lot of content for you. It never stops. And I hope you've enjoyed this series. I hope you've enjoyed seeing all the garments and all the practical sewing techniques that you've been able to see. Let me know what you think and I will be back very soon. Bye. Can